Let's face it, using social media to grow your business can feel like a really daunting task, but it doesn't have to be. What's up, guys? Marshall here, and something you may not know about me, I have actually been in the marketing game for over 15 years now. And the reason I want you to know that is because I have learned so much along the way, but I'm here to tell you, if I would have learned the hack that you are about to pick up 15 years ago, there is no telling where I'd be today. Luckily, you don't have to wait 15 years. You only have to wait about 15 more seconds. Welcome to episode 99 of the Serial Progress Seeker Podcast. Let's go. Welcome to the Serial Progress Seeker Podcast, where we share blueprints for building an unconventional life. Each week, we conduct expert interviews, talk strategies, and share advice for escaping the 9 to 5 and building a life where you are free to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, all while making an excellent living. Okay, Serial Progress Seekers, let's get started with the show. All right, guys, I'm excited for us to jump in today. Tabitha, you're going to really think this is pretty funny, I think. But you and I, let's just act like it's just you and I in the room for just one second. Let's act like Ben's Ben's not even <laughs> here with us. But we know this. Oh. We know this to be true. Our friend Ben okay. is a little different, right? He does things a little differently. <laughs> and, and I think we could, we could paint with a very broad brush here and say, just in general, our friend Ben does things differently. Am I, am I right? Do you agree with that? You are accurate. Okay. Yes, you are. Okay. I feel like we need to get that on the table. Let's go ahead and just wipe that slate clean. We need to know that. And the reason I bring that up is because what we're going to talk about today is how our friend Ben has done some things very, very differently over the years when it comes to building his business. And when it comes to the way he builds his business on social media. It's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think it, to be honest with you, I, of course we're making fun of him and he's in the room a little bit, but it's, this is all, this is all good things <laughs> because we have seen this, you know, sometimes from the sidelines for me in the past, it was from the sidelines and now being part of the team, I get to see it kind of firsthand. And it is unbelievable the way he has gone about doing some of the things that he does on social media. When I say unbelievable, to me it, to me it's it's innovative because we don't see a lot of people in this space doing some of the things that he's doing. So Ben, I want to immediately turn some things over to you. Number 1, we made fun of you a little bit. Number t number 2, we followed up with patting Sorry. you on the back a little bit. We we break you down and we build you up here on the Serial Progress Seeker podcast. That's what we do. But I want to talk different to in you. the best way. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> different in all the best ways. All the best ways. Yes. Uh, I think we need to jump into some of these things that you have done over the years to grow your particular business. Not only that, buddy, but you you grow businesses for other people. You grow some of your friends' businesses, some of your colleagues' businesses over the and you've been doing it for years and years and years. And you do it in a very special and specific way that just a, not a lot of people are doing. So let's and I know hopefully you've got some really good hacks to share that we can pass on to to our listeners of the podcast because I know that uh, a lot of people listen for these hacks because dude you have been doing this for a while. So talk to talk to us a little bit just as we get into some of these conversations about the way that you have grown businesses on social media. When you start to think about that, what are some of the things as you look back over your career that you have been doing that have really worked for you? And then we're going to dig into some, some of those specific hacks and really dig into how they're actually helping people all over the world. Sure. You know, and I, and I think that the idea of what we're going to talk about today, you know, cause this is something that is like very sort of that we all follow, but like, you ever feel like at the beginning of something, you missed the memo and you showed up to the party and you were looking at it from your perspective, not the perspective that you were supposed to, the design perspective, right? Um, I kind of missed the memo on social media early on. Like, I, I feel like that was what happened. It's like everybody was looking at social media a certain way. And I came into it looking at it in a way that, you know, was just sort of my perspective of it. And um, it was different. And it took me a long time to realize that I was looking at it differently than everybody else. And what I mean by that is, is most people go into social media and they think that success on social media is having a lot of fans, um, having a lot of people paying attention to you 
And having a lot of people like really focused on everything that you're putting out content wise and things like that. And so like, I feel like that's the traditional thing is like, if I'm going to be successful on social media, I have to put out a lot of content. Yeah, we believe that. We absolutely believe that, you know, you have to put out content on social media. That That is a part of what makes you successful in social media. But for years and years and years, like most of the big money that I have spent, on, you know, have, have actually gotten coming back to me where people have spent money on me or one of my businesses or the businesses of my clients, you know, it actually doesn't come from that. It doesn't come from we were posting content on social media and people thought, oh, that content's so good or it changed my life and I'm going to go buy something from them. It, it, it wasn't that at all. And the big hack that we're going to teach today, you know, everybody that I have taught this to that has actually gone and implemented it, it changed the trajectory of their business um, in like a week. I mean, it, it was just like they saw results almost right away from taking, you know, they were going, they were swimming this way in the stream. And all of a sudden they were like, wait, what happens if I turn around and do this? And, you know, they realized that the prize was actually behind them um, in, in the whole time. And it was just looking at the problem in a completely different way. And so what we're going to actually talk about today is just this real simple thing that's not overly complicated, but it's like, if you follow marketing at all, you have everybody shouting at you how to grow your Facebook page, how to grow your Instagram following, how to do all this and this and this. And, and you know, the best part I think about what we're going to do today is like if you had no accounts on these platforms, like zero accounts, and you wanted to build a business very, very fast, you could start tomorrow set up a Facebook page, set up an Instagram, set up a TikTok, anything that's, you know, quote unquote social media, you could set these things up and within one month, you could be earning income for whatever business that you have just by following this program. It's not how have I been posting every day for the last three years? No, it's not that at all. And so I'm kind of hyped because this is one of those things that was life changing for me. Uh, it wasn't that I had to discover it. It's just how I really just started viewing social media in the first place. And I'll tell some stories about that. Um, and then, like I said, I looked around and realized most people aren't doing this. Most people are going the very, very hard route of trying to, you know, get people interested in what they're doing. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, obviously people, anybody that's listening is like, okay, get to it. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it. But, but this is an important thing for me. And like I said, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Um, so I'll ask you guys the question, because I think that we should talk about this. What, when we are looking at social media and we're looking to grow a business, what is it that most people out there are doing? What is the focus? You know, if they want to be an influencer, whether they run a burger shop or they run, you know, or they're, you know, doing fashion, what is it that they're trying to do? I mean, what do you guys think? Like, what is it that most people that you guys see every day out there, what is the success metric for them? I'd say engagement and exposure. Yeah. 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 It's how many likes do I have on my page? How many likes did this post get? How many shares did it get? And it's, and it's it's so right? funny too how that's kind yeah, of evolved like, over the years, right? I can remember some of my early days like in casino marketing. I literally would go and sit at a table with our directors from all over the building. And one of my reported key metrics was the number of fans we had on our Facebook page. And you look back now and you're like, who gives yeah. a crap? <laughs> you know, like who cares about that now? Because, <laughs> because of what, right. uh, of what Tabitha just said, it's, it's everything is all about engagement. How do I get someone to like, how do I get someone to comment? How do I get them to bookmark? You know, how do I get them to retweet? You know, whatever it is, right. It's just, it's crazy how things sure, evolve over yeah. time. Right. Well, and I think that's the thing is you start looking around and you're like, okay, at first it was how many fans do we have on our page? Okay, cool. I even if they didn't interact with it, how many fans do we have? And then it evolved into something that I think is more important, which is actual engagement with the content that you're putting out. Are people actually interacting with the things day in and day out? And I think that's a much healthier metric. But that puts us at, in a spot to where, um, you know, you have to be putting out really great content every day. You have to be doing a lot of great things and that, that can get expensive. And if you don't have a full blown media department at your back, kind of like we do, I mean, we do, we have, we have this, you guys, we have a department. This is what we do. 
But if you don't have that and you're just starting out, maybe it's just you in a room or maybe it's just, you know, your brick and mortar business and you maybe got one employee. What do you do? How do you make money for your business with social media when you don't have that machine, that mechanism? And so th that's where we get into kind of the idea here is if everybody out there that is on social media is looking for intention, attention and they are looking for engagement, how can we as a business give that to them? And that's the, that's the thing that started to shift, you know, um, for me right away as social media hit is I was like, all I really have to do is be someone that's giving other people attention. I don't necessarily have to have all the intention for myself. And so I have a few stories uh, of how this was shaped because I don't think I'm really that smart. I just think it was the circumstance that I came into social media with that was sort of important. So story time. Uh, I started off as a chiropractor and I was always very aware that everything I did in my chiropractic office was super boring. Um, you know, I would look around at other chiropractors on social media when, when social media, especially Facebook really started to click in and I would look around and like seeing what they were posting about their office, like trying to sell me on like this chiropractic adjustment. And I'm like, I believe in this and I'm bored. You know, I'm already, I'm already on board and like, I don't want to come to your page anymore because like, I don't care. Like this is the most boring thing in the world. And so as I was thinking about how to market my office, I'm like, what do I do that's actually exciting? And I'm like, okay, what do I think is the most exciting part of my day? And so it was really interesting. I would take pictures of myself when I would go to ribbon cuttings for other businesses. I was like, this is an exciting thing. Somebody's starting their business today. I'm, I'm really into it. And so I'd take a picture of myself at the ribbon cutting. Um, if I went to a, um, like a business after hours where somebody had like good food and they were trying to like, I was like, I'm going to take a picture of the food because that's, what's exciting to me. Like I get excited about food. I would literally go to lunch and whatever restaurant it was in that day, I would take a picture of what I was eating. And you know, like this is the early on jokes of people like taking a picture of their food. Well, what's, you know, who cares? But what actually happened was, is I became known as um, the Facebook doctor, you know, for better or worse, I became known as the Facebook doctor and I started having people that would quite literally refer people to my office that had never stepped foot into my office. They would, you know, refer their close family to come in to see me because they felt like they knew me, even though they had never actually met me in person. And what happened was, is they saw me sort of being in this environment with, you know, other businesses, other people. And if those people, you know, obviously, you know, they, I look like them, right? I look like them. I didn't look like a business that was trying to market itself. Now that's, that's not really telling what the strategy here is, but it, this is what led me here. So over time, what was funny is I started to have a lot of people in the business community that really thought a lot of me and really respected me. They had never been to my office. They had never, you know, some of them had never met me. And it was funny. I started charting this back and I realized they thought a lot of me because I talked about their business all the time. Like this was the restaurant owners. This was the, you know, the chamber, chamber members. It was just, I had complimented, and this is where we're getting into what, what the actual strategy is along the way, because nothing in my office was interesting. I was complimenting the good food I was eating. I was complimenting this new business that was doing the ribbon cuttings. I was complimenting somebody that I had met and my entire marketing strategy over a very short period of time became, Hey, if you're impressed by something, talk about it, talk about it. If something in your life is cool that you think is cool and it made your life just this fraction of a bit better talk about it but also when you talk about it tag the business in it so that they know that you're talking about them and, and this you know this is one of those things where very early on i had droves and droves of new patients coming into my office all the time and you start tracking it back and you really look at what's happening. And it was people that were in these other businesses that were just giving me the nod of approval, being like, hey, if you got to go see a chiropractor, this is your guy. And so business started coming in and coming in. And the only thing that I was doing is I was winning over these other people because I was giving them what they wanted, which was they were trying to get popular on social media. And then there's somebody over here that's actually giving me that. Somebody's paying attention to me. And I think a lot of times when social media, that's that's where a lot of us are. It's like 
you know, we're doing all these things. Does, does anybody even see this, you know? And so we look at the likes, we look at the comments, we look at the shares, and that is validation for us that something that we're doing is actually connecting with people. And so that's great. If you have that machine, you can put that content out and that's something that you should absolutely do and pay attention to. But if I'm starting a business tomorrow and I don't have the ability or the time to do that, I am going to focus on something different. And that brings us to the big hack that, you know, very early on, I was like, this is the way it should be done. I want to focus my social media time, you know, whether it's, you know, you got 20 minutes a day, you got an hour a day that you can put in this. I want to focus all of my social media time on going in and complimenting other businesses, complimenting other uh, potential customers that might be a fit for my business. I want to interact with what they're doing so that I get on their radar. And all you have to do, and this is what opens up the big discussion of this hack that we've been using for years, quote unquote hack, it's a strategy for sure. This opens up the conversation to, if you want business, all you have to do is go on social media and give your potential customers, your potential partners, the attention that they're so desperately seeking on social media. And you don't have to have a profile full, uh, you know, a business or a personal profile full of content to do those things. Um, because I'm going to tell you, people are not turning down compliments for the products and the things that they're trying to put out there. And so that's, I want to open up the discussion because it's, this is a completely different way of looking at social media. You can grow a business. You can get people to pay you real money. You can sell your products. If all you do is you start using social media as a tool to go to other people's pages, if you start using social media as a tool to go to other people's profiles and start interacting with them, and we'll get real deep into this in a minute as to how to do it the right way, but that's the difference. And I want to hear from you guys, but I think the number one thing, you know, if we're really, you know, just putting a flag in the sand is if you're doing social media right now and you're smaller, or even if you're not a strategy, instead of trying to be someone that's putting out stuff where everybody's like looking at you, start going down the path of, Hey, I'm going to make sure that they understand that I see what they're doing. And so that takes us into sort of what we do next. So thoughts on that. I, I, you know, I, it's a, it's something that we know about here, but I look around and still to this day, this is not a strategy that a lot of people. Yeah. Have. I can tell you from my vantage point, everything changed when I realized the intention behind this thought for me, because I can remember some of my early days in marketing and stuff, doing some of the this, these similar things, we would go to, you know, community events, or, uh, you know, and, and what, at the end of the day, what we were trying to do is we we're trying to attach ourselves to other businesses and other brands, because we saw that as an opportunity for growth. But when I started to learn more about this, and especially the more I've gotten to be a part of this team and a part of this world, when you shift from just growing from attachment, and you shift your thought of, I'm just going to stand up and clap for these pe these people, this business. And and when you start to shift that thought, people you you get people see you in a different light. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's not it's not like you're just trying to, you know, leech on to somebody to, so you can grow your business. What you're really trying to do is just hey, applaud them and say you're doing a great job and leave it at that because there's so much more impact from that standpoint. I, that's something I've learned along the way is the intention behind what you're doing is so incredibly important. Well, and I think that it also, yeah, you know, sorry, yeah. what I was going to say is I think it's also easier for people to do this, this style, because it comes more naturally to talk about and compliment other people than it is to talk about yourself. Like it just comes more natural just to, to, to say nice things about other people than it is to say nice things about yourself. No, hundred percent. I think that, you know, a lot of people have a tough time you know, marketing because they, they, they don't want to come off as salesy. And so that's, a, that's a sort of a thing that we have to break in our heads. Um, but I, you know, I really look at who would I rather be? Would I rather be the person that runs a business that I'm always shouting about? And, and yes, you have to believe in your own self and your own product or no one else will, but would I rather be the person that's always shouting about their thing. And I, 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 you know, this is where a lot of people, you know, MLM, 
apps get a really bad name because you have people that like their whole marketing strategy is to just keep shouting about their business and how it's going to be so good for people and come join and come join and come join. Now the people that do MLM stuff really well, um, and they're successful. That's not how they run it at all. But like a lot of people that don't get it, that's the number one place where I see it just rampant across. Um, and it's just, there's so many that do that. Now, this is also in just the, the straight brick and mortar business world. You have people that all they ever do is shout about what they're doing. And you can be that style or you can be the style of business that's, like I said, always kind of talking about other people. And what that actually does is it makes people do something that is just like crazy. Every one of us here can name at least one person. I can guarantee you, you can probably name at least five where you don't exactly know what they do yet. Maybe they've just entered your life or maybe they don't talk about their business a lot. You don't exactly know what they do, but you're like, if they have a product, I'm buying it because I like them, you know, and I, that's the business that I want to be in. And that's the, you know, that's the kind of place where I'm like, that is a decision that if you make that decision, um, people are looking for you to talk about your business because they're ready. They're like, ah, whatever this person's into, I support and I want to be a part of it. If I can be a part of it, I want to be a part of it. And so that's kind of the thing is like, it doesn't take long to kind of implement the strategy. And we're going to get into some step-by-steps and like how to actually do this. But I think the thing that if you can sort of position your business in a way where people will actually go out of their way to figure out who you are and what you do, because you're just clapping for them all the time, it's a natural business growth thing. And, I, and I'll say this because I love what Marshall said. Is, is it's really about clapping for people. We work in a market. You know, there's different markets that we work in. There can be your local in the market is just because it's a local market, right? Or it can be an online market that's a certain niche, you know. But the idea is when you become somebody that is actively looking around and clapping for both your customer base or you're clapping for other businesses in your market, you are changing the overall environment of the market because we all have to get up every morning and work in an environment, a market that has been created. All right. Sometimes that is a very toxic place. Sometimes it's a very good place. And sometimes it's just sort of in between. But what happens is when you start to become somebody that is always looking around the market and you're clapping for your customers, you're clapping for your potential customers, you're clapping for other businesses in the market, you start to shift it to a place of overall positivity. And what's funny is when you start to create that environment, other people jump on board, which turns it into something that's much more positive. And, and when you see music scenes that are very positive versus music scenes that are very negative, when you see business you know, environments where like it's very cutthroat versus businesses that are everybody's trying to lift everybody up, it's, it's an understanding that when you start to work from a kind of a place of positivity and you create that kind of environment, which means it's not just that for you, it's for everybody, you start to understand that there's a lot more business that can actually flow. It's actually much more profitable overall than when you get into a place where the competition is completely eaten up. Um, and it's very cutthroat. Cutthroat tactics, I know that you know somebody's going to be watching this be like, well, Ben doesn't know my market. Yeah, well, you can make a lot of money. You can be the sole person in that, and you, and you can talk yourself into thinking that's a good thing because you own so much market share because, and you got there because of the cutthroatness, but it also shrinks the market overall. It also makes it to where there's not as much money flowing into an environment. And so I think it's very good when you get into a place like Apple is the biggest company in the world, but Apple is not Apple if Microsoft does not exist too. Uh, and, and, you know, Microsoft owns a big chunk of Apple, <laughs> you know, like, and, and that's the idea. Those, those environments create very good things. And when you, Make it a positive. It's big. Go ahead, Marsh. Uh, something you just said made me think so much of this because you you talk about music scenes and business and stuff. So this is this is going on in St. Louis as we speak. So, uh, it, you guys probably know this being close enough. People from St. Louis are very proud of being from St. Louis. It is a a very specific. It's something that like unlike I've ever experienced anywhere I've lived, and I've lived in a lot of places, but. Uh, and something that's happened over the last several years. So there was rumblings for a little while. And then it came to pass that there was going to be a professional soccer team here in St. Louis. Then it got passed. Everyone was incredibly excited. Then they built a stadium in the middle of downtown. Now we're to the point. The stadium is open. The team is rocking. And I will tell you the amount of businesses that continuously, especially on social media, are continuously pushing 
and just cheering for the St. Louis soccer club is unbelievable. And I, there is a, there's something programmed in my head when every time I see one of those posts where I go, you know what? I like this bar. I like this restaurant. I like this, you know, chiropractor, whoever it is that's posting this because they are adopting this whole business element. They're adopting this city. And it's something that's going on literally as we speak. And every time I see it, I never, I never realized that until you started talking about that. And man, it is, it's, it's crazy how much goodwill is built up, but also how much I'm probably more likely to go spend my money with those businesses because of that. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the key. And so I, I would love to get in some strategy here. Yeah. Like, let's say that you are a business and you're brand new and you want to go out and actually do this. And so let's, let's like, let's lock into this. Like, let's actually create a fake scenario here. That's like nothing that any of us are involved in, but like really kind of dig into this. Let's say that you have a t-shirt company. Okay. So you, you, you make t-shirts and you don't just make general t-shirts. Like you want to really get, you know, niche down into something. Right. And so let's say that you make t-shirts for, um, folks that are very, very into, um, skateboarding, right? Like, so hardcore into skateboarding. So this is something that none of us live in, which I think is, is fun. So none of us really live in this environment, but I, I wanted to have an example that was sort of outside of us so that we could sort of get into this in a very interesting way. Now, obviously I think it's important that you're passionate about what you're building a company on. Okay. But I think it's for, for the example here, it's important that we're not, uh, you know, so let's say you're getting into this market and all of a sudden you are a nobody. You got this brand, you built a brand and you're, you're building t-shirts, maybe some hats, um, some things like that. And it is a hundred percent for folks that are into skateboarding. Okay. So the, the tactic here is super important. Number one, you want to actually go out and find you know, companies that are building boards for kids, right? Like the, the, who are the big companies that are building boards? And if you're into this topic, you probably want to go try out some of these boards and see what you really like. Okay. So you've got some of that. Now here's the, here's the other one. You want to go in and you want to find, um, what are the big communities across the country? What are the communities that have built skate parks? Okay. So like, what are the, the actual communities that have built skate parks? And you make like a big list of this, right? All right. From there, who are the big real retailers that sell shirts and boards and things like that? So who are the big companies that sell these kinds of products? And you make this big list of that. All right. So you've got that list. Now, you also have this list of like people that are famous in the skateboarding. Either they are really, really famous, you know, like Tony Hawk level, or they're coming, they're on their way up, right? And so you make this list of people that are sort of like doing their thing and they are trying to sort of build their fan base too. And so you got this big list of people that make up this community, right? And here's you with no fans, with no social media presence, but you got your shirts, you got your ideas and you think that they're really good. So what you do is you go in and let's just start off with Instagram. Let's just say that we're going to do Instagram. This works in, you know, it would work with TikTok. It would work with uh, Facebook. It works with all social networks. Um, YouTube, but we want to start with Instagram. And so what we're going to do is obviously I've got, you know, maybe 10 shirts that I'm proud of and I'm going to go take pictures of my shirts and maybe, you know, once a day I'm going to post a shirt out talking about the story behind the shirt and why I think it's cool. All right. So let's get 10 pictures on our, on our Instagram profile. Let's get a URL to our Shopify store. Let's get that in there. And, you know, in the description, let's maybe talk about our mission and why we love skating. All right. Our profile picture will be our logo, um, maybe our founder, you know, holding up our logo, but something that's just like, it tells, it sort of tells our story. Remember, this is day one, uh, but we've got our t-shirt designs. Uh, you may not even have them printed up. It may be literally you posting just mock-ups uh, of these. You could go to Canva right now and you could have your mock-ups. You could throw them in. You could get a mock-up of the t-shirt and start posting on your Instagram. You wouldn't even have to have produced anything. And then, you know, what I'm going to do every day. My, my gig of when I'm not doing my other gig, because a lot of people that would start this company probably already work somewhere else. Um, this is the thing that they want to be what they do for a living, but they're not there yet. So you would go on Instagram every day and every single day you're going to go through that list and you are going to look at what these people are posting and you are going to leave a comment talking about something very specific about that post. Not just some random thing where you're just jumping around, but like, I love 
I love that you're out in Colorado. Uh, I actually know about this skate park, um, you know, that, that you guys are, are shooting this in. Um, I, I know about Tony that runs this because you've done your research. Like, you know, about these places that people are in, you know, the research. And if you don't know about it and they post something where you're like, I'm going to go look this up so that I can leave a relevant comment. And a part of this process is just continually to educate yourself more and more and more to build yourself into what is the culture of the community. And so from there, every single day, we're going to leave something um, that's that, you know, just a little, Hey, I see you. I support what you're doing. It's great. There's never a come check out my stuff. This drives me crazy when people like I delete these comments on our Instagram every single day from just spammers that are like popping this stuff in there. But what happens is is like we really start to understand as a brand that is putting out content. We, We see every single day the people that show up that are real, that are leaving real comments. Like there's five names in my head right now that they show up every day on my social. And if those people need to get on a phone call, if those people have a product that's for sale, I'm paying attention to it. I really am because those people are the people that are invested in us. And, you know, and I have a lot more than five, but like I have five that are hardcore that like top of my mind. Like I'm like, what product do you have? What do you do? How can I support you? Because you have always supported us. But that's it. It's on Instagram every single day. I'm spending my 20 minutes or my hour and I'm just scrolling and I'm leaving comments. And what is going to happen every single day is people are going to like, oh yeah, that's, that's them again who are they? And they're going to click through and they're going to come see your stuff and they're going to go to your store, see what it's all about. And very quickly in this process, you're going to see a sale come through. Like absolutely. If you're, if your product is halfway decent, you're going to see a sale come through. If it's not halfway decent, well, you may run into a problem there, but if you've got a halfway decent product, you are going to see that first t-shirt for your skate stuff sell. And that's going to be some validation that what you're doing is working. And then you're going to be like, well, maybe I should do a little more of this. But from there, what's going to be really funny is, is something nuts is going to happen three, four months down the road. And this is where it gets really interesting. Maybe you're making some sales here or there, but then all of a sudden, one of these people that you're, it's maybe the influencer, like the actual skater, they're going to take a picture and they're going to be wearing your shirt and they're going to tag you back because You've shown them so much support. You've shown them, hey, I'm with you. I'm in your comments every day. I'm watching your feed every day. They're going to take a picture. You don't have to pay for it. And they're going to have your shirt on. And that's going to mean something to their fan base. And, you know, and it's going to start to happen where, you know, these skate park owners, you know, or the cities that do this, they're going to see you too. And what starts to happen over time is not only do the sales come in, you know, trickle by trickle here and there, but organically your stuff starts to land in places and people like, Hey, where'd you get that shirt? They're going to talk about it. You're going to have orders start coming from places that you never expected. And over time, you're going to start to see very organically your Instagram fan count show up because people are wearing your stuff and they actually believe in your mission. They believe in what you're doing. And that's how, and this, this is what I love about this. We never had to leave our house to do this. You know, there's never been a time in our history where you could build a business like this organically without having to leave your house or to leave your town. Every You don't even have to even really be sitting in front. Like you could do almost all of this from start to finish from your phone of building this up. And I have a lot of people that are like, well, I want to start this. I got an idea for a product, but they have no idea how to go get attention to their product traffic. This is it. It's literally just jumping over to people's profiles every single day and commenting on their stuff. And that's what's so great. Like I do it all the time. Somebody, somebody compliments something three days in a row, little, Hey, I love what you're doing with this. I so agree with this motivational thing that you guys put out there. Cause we do a lot of motivational stuff that, you know, we live, but we'll have somebody call. And if I see their name three days in a row, I'm going to look at who they are. And, you know, I got this buddy that, um, you know, this is the ideal thing. I just spent like 400 bucks, you guys on an art print. Um, now I, I'm, I'm the kind of person that does this because like, if you look around my office, like it, not here, cause like the background for here is nice, but if we were to actually scroll around this office, there's art everywhere. But I have this buddy who's I've worked with for years and he's always just like, you know, he's just overly supportive of everything that I'm doing, like with no expectation in return. And then all of a sudden you guys out of the blue, he's like, I got the secret. I was like, what's the secret? He's like, I've actually been a digital artist for like 30 years. 
And I was like, what? He's like, yeah. And I was like, you know, and in my head, I'm like, okay, you're a digital artist. Cool. He's like, I can't show any of this stuff, but I'm actually, I'm actually going to be in this book. Um, I'm illustrating for a book of poems and um, boy, George is involved. And I'm like, what? Like all this stuff. And then like, finally he sends me an image and the guy's amazing, like amazing. And so he's, you know, he, he puts the stuff out. He's doing, he's got like all this opportunity because of his digital art. And this is not what this guy was doing for years, by the way, this is an all of a sudden thing. He was, he had a completely other business. Uh, and, and then he puts his art up for sale. And I'm, I'm like one of his first buyers, if not his first buyer. Cause I'm like, I am, I want to tell the story of this piece just because I love the story, but like, the art is amazing. I cannot wait for it to be hanging on my wall. And all he has done, all he has ever done is been supportive of me. And this is just somebody that like I've, I've met in person several times, but like our relationship didn't start that way. Our relationship started completely online. And so the really interesting thing is, is instead of trying to be so great and standing up on the stage and being so like everybody look at me, which is absolutely the wrong way to start out. You got to start looking at life as how am I strengthening the the good time that everybody else is having? And this is the idea of like when I'm in a, when I'm on stage as a band member now, I stopped looking at it as like, oh, I'm some, I'm trying to be some rock star that everybody's looking at. Cause like, let's look at this. That ain't going to work. The idea here is, is when I'm up on stage, my job is to make sure that everybody in the audience they're the star of the show. Like, that's the idea. Are they the star of their table? Are they the star or can they sing a song that they just love and they have the best time possible? And that's really what it is. When you stop, even when you're standing on the stage, which is your social media, let's think about that. You're standing on a stage. Even when you're standing on a stage, is your job to be the center of attention or is your job to make other people the center of attention? And when you have a brand that's actually doing that on social media, they're making you know their potential customers the center of attention, or their competitors even. Hey, listen, these guys, uh, you know, their t-shirts are all right, but we actually really love them. They support the community, and I want to call them out today. They, we you can see them as a competitor, but you guys are really great, and we want to, you know, and you go compliment them. Those are the kind of things that completely change the game of what we're talking about. And once again, I think the thing about complimenting people on social media instead of waiting for people to come recognize you is you control that. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for hoping someone comes to your page. You can every day control. And, you know, more strategy. And then I want some feedback from you guys because I've been talking too long. Sorry. More strategy here is every single morning I have this period where I wake up, but I'm not ready to get out of bed. Okay. It's just part of my part of my jam, and I wake up. I'm not ready to get out of bed. I don't have to get out of bed yet. And instead of sleeping longer, what I try to do is I try to pull up my Instagram and Facebook, and that's what I do for that 30 minutes to an hour before I actually get out of bed. It's a good way for me to actually wake up um, to get to where I'm ready to actually get out of bed, but it's a great strategy every single day. So before I even attack the world, I'm waking up, I'm on my phone, and half of my job it's just going to other people's pages and calling out the good things that they're doing that I think are cool. So thoughts, because I know that this opens up because like, you know, part of our strategy here is we go make comments on other people's social media pages. That is an actual strategy that we implement. And so what I'd love to ask is this, because I know you see it a lot closer. When you have done that, what are some interesting things and some interesting people that we've interacted with that was just fascinating to us? And like, what, what were some of the interesting things that it opened up? I'll tell you from my standpoint, just, just from doing it uh, on, on behalf of this, of this podcast, number one, it's been eye opening for me just because there were a lot of podcasts that I already listened to, you know, prior to coming to work for serial progress, secret podcast. But then when I started to see it, from a podcaster's view, I really appreciated the work that they were doing so much more. Um, so now I find myself doing the same thing, Ben. I get up in the morning and it's funny. I didn't know this. We had this in common. I do the same thing. I I will s- intentionally set my alarm earlier so I get more time to lay in bed. And it's because that's how I like to start my day too. And I go through, I'll scroll through YouTube and, and I'll watch some videos and stuff. And, and, and people that we can are considered to be competitors with quote unquote are some of the people that I really like to follow the most because 
they have the best things to say at the end of the day. So I like to get on there and, and I just think about it from the standpoint of what it makes me feel like and what it makes our team feel like when we receive one of those compliments. I just hope that someone on the other end, when I'm going and giving my time and I'm, I'm very, very thoughtful. I do my best to be very thoughtful about the compliments I give because I don't want them to be basic. Hey, good job. I want, I want someone to read it and go, wow, they, they, they listened to what I had to say. They internalized it. And at least, you know, it kind of, it kind of landed home for them. So when that, when those comments hit our inbox, I get ecstatic. So I really hope that when we, we kind of put that out into the world and, and share that with some people that it kind of feels the same way. But those are, I, I just feel like at the end of the day, standing up and, and, and cheering people on the fulfillment that goes both ways just makes it all, it just makes it all worth it. And I feel like some of my best contributions to the team are when I'm doing that. Like, you know, I, obviously we're, we're getting here, we're recording together, we're, you know, coming up with ideas and things like that. But when we're actually spending time uh, doing that, I, I think those are the kind of things at the end of the day, that are going to make the biggest difference for all of us. Yeah. I'm going to call Tabitha out here a little bit. Um, because this is, you know, our early, early Ben and Tab relationship is sort of where I internalized this concept before I even applied it to social media. Um, I think too many times, personally, and I'll call you out in a second, but I got to make this point first. Too many times we think if we compliment a competitor or another business, it takes power away from us and it makes them stronger. And so we avoid Right. Like, you know, I think I think anybody that's in business think that, you know, that thought has crossed their mind is I can't interact with these people and I can't lift them up because it makes them that much stronger than me. And I'm trying I'm just trying to get strong. I'm trying to claw and scratch my way through anyway. And it's, it's absolutely the wrong thought like that. They're make that makes zero sense. Because everybody else can see what they're doing good. You know, you you giving credence to it or, or noticing it doesn't make it, you know, it's 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 you saying, hey, I'm a real human too. I see what's going on over here. But this is something that like when I first met Tabitha, Tabitha worked in a digital marketing agency. Um, they did a lot of video. They did a lot of photo. It was a really, really high quality work. They did a lot of web dev, things like that too. But the thing that was really interesting to me about Tabitha is when I would like, Tabitha would come by and say, hey, you know, maybe Tabitha was trying to like make interactions, and I know she was, to grow the business. Like, you know, Tabitha was just a people person and like the more people she interacted with, the more the business grew, the more comfortable people were with their business. But something that was really interesting about Tabitha early on in a person to person, you know, let's take this into a sort of a person to person arena. Tabitha was very good at every time I interact with her, if I had a problem, she had no problem pointing me to other business and saying, this is who you need to do business with. They're very, very good. This is, she was a connector. And that's, there's a level to this complimenting strategy that that's what it's about too. It's like, I've got an audience. I'm, I'm, you know, when I go comp, you know, talk about somebody else or even tag them on my page, I'm connecting people with other good people. And when those interactions are good, I know that it comes back to me as well. And so very early on, you know, from a person to person perspective, I know Tabitha was very good at just giving me her black book, her internal black book of who was good to do certain things and was very good at talking good about people behind their back. And I think the the point that I'm trying to make, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, Tabitha, is that leveled your brand up immediately with me, like immediately, like even, you know, even before I actually interacted with the business and, and saw, okay, is this a good thing? But like the fact that you had places to point me, you know, information is power mm -hmm. and we all want to have a guy. And sometimes we don't have a guy or a girl that like, that's their thing. And like when somebody has those things that can, they can point you that direction. It's good. So from your perspective, Tabitha, like with this, um, and, and especially when it comes to the person to person stuff, you know, I know that probably wasn't a strategy for you. It was just natural, mm -hmm. but like, <laughs> give me some thoughts on that. Yeah, no, that's like you said, it wasn't a strategy at all. It was just me being me. And I have always been a connector of people. I, I enjoy it. I love pointing people in the right direction on, on who, I, I still do it to this day. Sometimes at a fault, like people don't ask me and I'm like, oh, you should go do this. <laughs> and go talk to this person. So sometimes it bites me in the butt, but for the most part, no, it's, it's, I can't think of a reason why you shouldn't be that kind of person or share that kind of information. If you know of a business that really does take care of people in a great way, you should be recommending those people regardless. So that's, yeah, I don't know that the, the, there's no strategy there. It was just who I was. So, well, let's, let's get into like some strategy there. Um, because I think that, you know, we've talked a lot about, okay, we need to go out to other people's pages 
and, you know, give them compliments on their posts. But like, okay, well, let's say that I'm not somebody that has all the time in the world to post on my own page. And I want more stuff than just maybe what I'm capable of for my own internal environment. So I think a really big strategy for us has, has always been that when I come back to my page with what I'm going to post, um, a lot of times it's, I build my brand up by talking about other people's brands and tagging them on my page. And a lot of my content that has done really, really well over the years is just literally me talking about somebody else. And, and once again, it's funny how you can build your own brand up by saying nothing about your brand by nothing about your business. And a lot of times, I mean, I remember there was a, a restaurant uh, that I talked about a lot when I was a chiropractor. And I, I mean, like my feed during that time was probably just a million shots of their food, right? And this is what's so funny. What that resulted in, I probably did that for a good six months of just talking, you know, with no expectation in return of talking about this restaurant. And one day I got a phone call and that phone call was, hey, we actually want to do a healthier menu. Like we've got all these things, but we've got some really healthy things, but I don't think a lot of people realize that we have some really healthy options too. And we would love for you to be the face of that menu. Meaning we want to put your face on the healthy options menu um, because, you know, you've been talking about fitness over here and we actually want to do that. And literally I went in and they used a picture of me on a menu and it was the healthy options menu. The amount of press that, that, I mean, that was a busy restaurant. The amount of press that, I mean, I definitely won out in that deal. I definitely won out in that deal. I got so much more. It branded me in a completely different way. And it was in front of people that I, my marketing would have never touched. And it was just because they were like, this is somebody we want to work with. This is somebody that we know has our back and they've had our back for months. And this is somebody that is not going to let us down and do something that makes our brand look bad. And those are the kinds of opportunities that if you continually show up day in and day out, I mean, I didn't talk just about them. They, they, you know, they weren't the primary focus of what I was doing, but it, they were a regular show up on my page. And so if you're looking for a content strategy for your social media and you're like, ah, man, I just can't generate stuff by myself. Look at around as your favorite brands that are in your niche. And what can you do? Like I've got like hats right now sitting in the next room that I wear one kind of hat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pretty much I wear one kind of hat and that hat, you have seen that hat on the podcast, whether you knew it or not, you've seen that brand on the podcast over and over and over again. And the strategy that I could do right now is I could literally go to the serial progress seeker page and I could say, guys, I'm not paid to say this, but like you've seen me wear these hats a million times. I absolutely love this company. And if you were looking for the best fitting hat in the world, go check these guys out. I don't have a link. Here's their website. Go to their website. And immediately I have forged a relationship because there is somebody sitting over there in their social media department that saw that because I tagged them. And now our serial progress seeker brand has a relationship with that company. And they're, they're going to look and they're going to be like, this is not just an individual. This is a business. What does this business do? Oh, they have a podcast. Interesting. And that's, that's it. You guys, that's what it is. It's like, so many times we get so in this track of like, how many listens do we have on the podcast? How many social media followers do we have? How many people engage with our stuff? And we miss the biggest portion of what we can do, which is just looking at somebody else that's trying to get attention and giving them attention. And if you do that, you open up a completely new possible revenue stream. You open a completely new sort of thing. You know, if we keep doing that down the road, maybe we get a call back from them. Maybe we don't. It doesn't matter. It's not what we're looking for. But the idea is your social media both in a place of you going to comment and what you post on your page, if you start making it about other people and giving them what they want, which is attention, you know, you know, a spotlight on their brand, you're going to instantly level up what you're doing. And if you continue to do that over a period of months and years, um, that's how you go from being at a very small level, you know, with no money <laughs> to being at a very high level without having to spend a lot of money to get there. And I think that that's a, a very solid strategy for anybody that's out there that's looking for a strategy. You're like, I can't do what other people are doing. I just don't have the money to do it. So I think something too, I'd like to throw in, throw in here too. This is, and th this could be something we've talked a little bit sometimes been about things being broken inside you. This is something that maybe is a little weird about me. 
I moved to St. Louis several years ago, and this is something I do because I've I've moved a few times in my in my life, but this is something I do to learn to plug into a new location. I immediately engage on social media with restaurants, mechanics, dentists, like, because I because I especially when I came to St. Louis, I didn't know anybody. So I started to engage with all of these people on social media. And you know, as a consumer, the ones that I stuck to were the ones that I went on and I saw posts like the ones that you post about restaurants where you like, or like, I just wanted to say, I love this place. And I just just wanted to talk about that. And those are the people that kind of stuck in me over time. So I think we're, we've been looking at this so much from the business side as we should, but let's not lose sight of the fact too, that like there are consumers out there. Cause I know I'm not alone as far as people that do this. That is how I got plugged into St. Louis. And I think it's, it's, it's literally made me enjoy my time here more. It's because I did that at the very beginning and I really plugged into some certain businesses because there are just key businesses that you have to have a connection with. And that's what I did right out of the gate. And I think a lot of people do that. I would also throw in there too, that there, it doesn't have to be love to just businesses. You can throw love out there for charities and organizations and your city oh, and yeah. your parks and recreation departments and all the different things like that. It doesn't have to just be local businesses. You can give love to all kinds of different organizations. It doesn't have to just be business to business. It can go you know further than that. Yeah. I, you know, and on that, I, I can't tell you how many patients uh, in the chiropractic office I got from local charitable organizations that, you know, we just called out on social media is awesome. And, you know, and that, that's the thing. And it, it, I totally agree. It is really finding out about who, who is in your community and who's trying to do good stuff. And even if it, they're not in your community, but they're doing great things, um, call them out. And it's amazing how it comes back when you're somebody that's doing this. And the reason this works so well is because nobody's doing it. You know, there's a, there's a 1% on social media out there that is doing this. And that 1%, um, if you follow them over years, turns into the monster. And a lot of times it's really interesting because somebody will come to some of these pages that we're running and we're like, it doesn't look like you guys are doing that good. And I'm like, that's good. It's good that you don't see what our strategy is. I have never been ashamed of how many followers we have versus somebody like, listen, it's real easy to get followers on social media. It actually is super easy. It's not necessarily easy to get followers that will pay you. <laughs> and, and this is something we're very, very good at. It's, you know, it's not necessarily easy to get people who don't follow you to pay you. But that's the thing. If you're doing social media the right way, you're, you know, I would much rather have the money scoreboard that nobody can see publicly going in my favor and the sentiment scoreboard going in my favor that nobody can see on social media than I would the fan count. And I probably have sacrificed having giant. Now I have Facebook pages that have hundreds of thousands of followers on them. Most people have no idea that I own them. You know, I've got that, but nothing compared to sentiment and money in the bank account scoreboard as some of my pages that have very little followers because we're doing this, you know, we're doing this and like, you know, a relationship that we have that puts tens of thousands of dollars into our pockets is not always as easy to decipher from just looking at how many people follow a page or how much this post got an engagement. And so when you look at social media this way, that's the beautiful part. You can have this many followers and you can still get a huge benefit out of that. Like zero followers, you can get a ton of benefit. You can get money coming through and once again, you're sitting in the 1%. And so it's so effective because people just aren't used to it and it shocks them and they will pay attention to you. And you can get, a, you can get the attention of huge, huge brands with a lot of money to spend. You can get the attention of people that have things that you want. Maybe it's not money, but maybe you want a new skateboard, you know, and you can do some really, really cool things. And so my challenge to everybody that's listened to this podcast today is start doing this differently. Start doing it in a way where you are going to other people's social media channels that are in your field and you are just lifting them up, complimenting them and really saying good things about them that you really mean. Be specific and say things that you really mean, but every day make that a part of your process instead of just trying to post things and get a lot of likes. That is a fool's errand. 
And I mean that because over the years, working with a lot of brands out there, working with our own brands, um, you start to see that those likes do not equate into a lot of dollars. It is the relationships that you form. It is the deals that you get cut. It is the things that happen behind the scenes because of how we've reached out. Um, That's where the real value is. So like I said, my challenge to everybody is that. It's go do social media different for the next month and watch what starts to happen uh, when you're not trying to be like everybody else, which is look at me. I am the star of the show. When you make other people the star of the show on social media by going to their pages or tagging them on your own page, that's when things really start to open up and they'll open up really, really fast. Yeah, that's really fantastic advice. And and before we get out of here, guys, I found something that I thought just kind of supported everything that we've been talking about. There's this article that I saw online from the Harvard Business Review. I'll make sure we include it in the show notes, but it was simply called A Simple Compliment Can Make a Big Difference. And there's a summary that I wanted to read because I thought this hit home so, so well. It says, there's ample evidence that giving someone else a boost, whether giving compliments or expressing gratitude, has a mood lifting effect and contributes to overall well being. But we often hold back unnecessarily because we aren't calibrated to the actual effects our positive messages have on others. So when it comes to deciding whether to express praise or appreciation to another person, doubt often creeps in. I thought that was really interesting. We are overly concerned about our ability to convey praise skillfully. Like what if what if my delivery is just awkward and we we get anxiety and that leaves us feeling overly pessimistic about the effects our messages will have. And sadly, people's pessimism causes them to refrain from engaging in this behavior that would make everyone better off. I read that guys and I was just like, holy cow, that is such a punch in the gut. Cause even though, as we've discussed, we make an extremely concerted effort to give compliments, we can do better. Right. And, and I feel like that's the reason we wanted to talk about this today, because we just see that not that many people out there are doing this. And maybe if more of us did, you know, businesses would grow, but morale would grow. Everyone would be better off because there'd be so much more optimism. I just thought that was a really, really great summary of an article. No, I love it. I love it. Um, Speaking of giving compliments, um, we are on the verge of something huge that the two of you are responsible for, which is our 100th episode. Um, this is episode 99, I believe. Yeah. Like, and so we are on. And so listen, I've been doing podcasts for years, um, and I can never get consistent with it. And uh, this team of podcasters, uh, Marshall, Tabitha, we we have turned this into something that we all love doing every week. I enjoy it. I mean, you know, this is one of my favorite parts of the entire week. And I think a lot of people that listen to this, it's it's a you know, it's a nice little thing for their week that gets them off on the right foot. Maybe teaches them something that goes and makes them more money, brings a little extra happiness into their life. Uh, but we're on the verge of 100, um, and so we wanted to celebrate by doing a little behind the scenes. And we have a lot of people out there that um, want to put together a podcast. They've actually got some really good ideas. I have people that are like, hey, so I got this idea for a podcast. Um, What do you think? And so I hear a lot of good ideas for podcasts that I'm super jealous of all the time. But a good idea is just that until you actually do something with it. And so, you know, I think a lot of people are like, well, how do you guys, how does this actually get produced? Like, because there's a lot more to this than just showing up on the day that we record and, you know, putting it out there. There's a lot of steps that actually um, happen. So we thought it'd be really cool for our 100th episode to take you all behind the scenes as to what a typical week looks like for us um, to get to production. Um, Also, how long does it take an episode to get to from production, like where we record it to live? What is the life cycle of this? How does everything come together? So we're going to walk you through how an episode goes from this little baby idea to actually making it to the place where we've approved it to recording it all the way to where it goes live and what happens after it goes live so that we make sure that people actually, you know, hear this episode and, you know, do something with it and and get to hear it. Um, So that's what we're going to do for our 100th episode. We're going to take you guys behind the scenes and walk you through our current process of actually doing this. There's a lot of uh, steps to this. There's a lot of people involved that are behind the scenes that aren't just the three of us. And we're going to take you behind the scenes to do that. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, huge thing. This is, this is 99. 
And I think it's super important that we celebrate when we get to 100 because that's a big milestone for me. There was times when I was doing this podcast, I was like, we're never going to see 100 because I can't be consistent with it. Uh, but with this team, you know, we've done it. And um, I can't wait to get to 200. I can't wait to get to 500. And um, we hope that you guys are enjoying the journey with us. So join us next time on the podcast. We're going to be doing a special episode for number 100. And I think you guys are going to be absolutely blown away. Um, and I think it's something that if you see our process, it's something that you guys – um, can implement and start to, to really, you know, build towards and see kind of how all this can turn into something that's profitable. The other thing I'm going to talk about is what is the monetization strategy behind all this? Um, so what's the point of it all? And I think that that's going to be a whole heck of a lot of fun. So we'll see you guys next time on episode 100. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Serial Progress Seeker podcast. If you want to listen to more episodes, learn more about our mission, or send us questions or feedback about the show, go to SerialProgressSeeker.com. You can help the mission by subscribing, reviewing, rating, and commenting wherever you listen to or watch podcasts. And be sure to connect with us on social media for all the latest through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. We'll catch you next time, Serial Progress Seekers.